today is Friday, 5.30 in the p.m., and this is your host for the next 25 minutes of the most interactive television in town, Hotline 21, Chicago Cable Access. And if you're not looking, you're not listening, you're not viewing, then you ought to be doing so. And if you really want to get your message across, you ought to have your own show, have your own program, have your own information, have your own stuff to talk about. You know, this is the information age. Everybody knows something, and everybody knows something that you ought to know. There's no way to come up on this weekend and this week without talking a little bit about a hero. A hero. Not a showro, but a hero. A man who changed America. Not as much as America needs to be changed, but I can tell you that because he lived, some of us can face tomorrow. Because he lived, some of us have hope that we didn't have. Because he lived, some of us have been able to do things that we had not done before. Because he lived, do you know that when I was growing up, I did not know a single black person, period, that was an elected official. Here I am, a member of the United States House of Representatives, one of 435 people who make laws for the country, before Dr. King, I did not personally know one black elected official at all. And who can ask the question, did Dr. King make a difference? Before Dr. King, there were schoolhouses all over the place with no running water with no inside toilets. You gonna tell me Dr. King didn't make a difference? There were schools with no libraries and even very few books. Because he lived, when I was a kid, every time I got a school book, it had somebody else's name in it before I got it, because he lived. So we will celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King. We will celebrate his life, his legacy. The mayor had a great breakfast this morning. I was so glad that I was able to get there. Miriam Wright Elderman was the keynote speaker. And one of my most favorite persons in the world, Dr. Mildred Harris, got a lifetime champion achievement award. Dr. Mildred Harris, whose husband and I went to the same undergraduate school. And he, of course, was a hero to all of us who went to the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, better known when we were students as Arkansas AM and N College, Agricultural, Mechanical, and Normal College. Dr. Mildred Harris, God's First Ministries, congratulations to you. It is an honor that was due, an honor that was deserved, and I wish we could keep giving you an honor every day. 
because you have been a stalwart. You have meant so much to those who follow your ministry. But I say that you are the minister for the city of Chicago. Your service as a commissioner of the Chicago Housing Authority is just off the chart. And I say thank you for that. We also have some announcements that I want to make. One, I want to personally invite on behalf of my pastor and the By the Hand Club, my pastor is a gentleman, Reverend Michael Ross, and the New Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, and the By the Hand Club, and the Midwest District Association, you know, these Baptist churches, they have associations where many of them come together and do things in fellowship and with love. And so on Sunday at 3.30 at the church that I hold membership in, and I know people say they separate church and state, but as far as I'm concerned, without church there wouldn't be no state. <laughs> so we separate church and state, but I am a practicing Protestant Christian person who I'm not ashamed of the gospel. So I'm inviting everyone to come to my church on Sunday. 3.30, that's the New Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, 431 North Laramie. We have an outstanding program in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King. We have children, we have people who will remind us of what Dr. King meant to them. We have music. We have speech making, and we even have refreshments, food and stuff like that. So come on out and join with us. You know, I had a call earlier today, and a lady told me that her furnace had gone out. And I was so proud that I could tell her that on Saturday, January the 25th, we have our annual winter resource fair that's going to be at the Mark Skinner West School at 1260 West Adams Street. And you can come there and get some help if you've got a problem with your furnace. And her furnace has gone out, so she doesn't have a furnace right now. You can come to the Skinner West School, 1260 West Adams, from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock, Saturday, January the 25th. We want to thank CEDA, Commonwealth Edison, People's Gas, and all of those who are helping to make this real. Usually two, three hundred people get help. If your lights are off, if your gas is off, you got a big gas bill and you can't pay it, you can come there on the 25th and next Saturday and get some help. So if you don't remember that, you can call my office at 773-533-7523. Zero. And they can tell you what you need to bring. You need to be able to prove that the bill is your bill. So you need information showing that you do have this bill. All you got to show that you own the property if something is going to arrive with your furnace. So come and, and get help. There's also going to be 
on tomorrow, the sister march. People all over the city will be marching, women, that is. Men, if they want to march, they can be in the march too. We won't discriminate. Well, the women won't discriminate. The march is going to be, this one is going to be actually at the 345 Art Gallery, 345 North Kedzie. And it's women rising from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Rally and program will start at noon promptly. Women of the 7th Congressional District, as if there's any other congressional district. Well, you know, I won't say forget the rest and think of the best, but if you're in the 7th Congressional District, you know, they always say 7 is a lucky number. If you're shooting dice, crap, gaming, gambling, and you throw 7 on the first throw, you know what that means, right? That means you have won. So, if you live in the 7th District, join us at the 345 Art Gallery. A wonderful, wonderful place. And uh, we'll just convene up there and have ourselves a good time. So, remember Saturday and remember Sunday. Now, you know, there's always some news that ain't all that pleasant. The trial, impeachment trial, really gets going on Tuesday. And there's going to be an effort to convict the president. The president has already been impeached. And that means charges have been brought against him because there are people who feel that he overstepped his bounds and that he violated some of the laws and some of the rules. So much and so until there is an effort to say to people that a lot of people don't think he ought to be in office. It, that nobody should be above the law. Nobody is above the law. And we can't have a country called the United States of America and have a feeling that anybody, whether it's the president, whether it's the vice president, whether it's the caller that's on the air, nobody is above the law. But let's pause for the calls and take our first call for the afternoon. Caller, are you there? Yeah, how you doing, Connie Davis? James, I am doing good. How are you? Okay. Now, God been asking your prayer. He been asking Nancy Pelosi prayer and your prayer. I mean, uh, he been asking Nancy Pelosi prayer, prayer and your prayer. But now, okay, now he going to try to deal with the aldermen who be doing wrong, too. And uh, then, uh, then he gonna deal with the police officers because every time, and my prayer squad again, okay, the, every time when they uh get in front of the media, and uh, they were talking about the guy getting guns off the street, that's not true. If they did, it would be no shooting in your ward or what Father Flay had. Well, you know the good thing about our country. We call it my country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where our fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, let freedom ring. Martin Luther King used to say, and if freedom is to reign, then it has to reign everywhere. And people have to feel that they have freedom. There was a lady in our town when my sister and we were growing up. We called her Aunt Ella. Everybody called her, I guess, Aunt Ella. But after her husband died, her, my mother would tell my sister Chris and I, 
So you all just go down there and spend the night with Aunt Ella and keep her company. Uh, you all go down there and spend a couple nights or something with Aunt Ella and keep her company. And Aunt Ella owned her own home. And her husband's name was Uncle Nero. And she called him Jack. And she said when Jack built that house, he says, Ella, this house is your house. You can go in this room, do as you please. You can go out in the backyard, do as you please. Well, Aunt Ella <laughs> didn't like to eat a lot of things. Almost every day she ate collard greens and sweet bread. <laughs> and she loved collard greens and sweet bread. My sister and I, we liked collard greens, <laughs> but we didn't love collard greens. <laughs> and she'd say, when it's time to eat, she said, come on, children, and let me fix y'all something to eat. And we knew what was coming. Collard greens and sweet bread. Now we don't know what's coming as a result of this trial. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. And we will wait and see. But we want to believe that the integrity of our Constitution is on the line. And we're hoping that the integrity of our Constitution is upheld. So I'm not saying whether one is innocent, whether one is guilty. That's what the trial is supposed to determine. But I also think it's important for us to know that politics often enters into decision making. And I am told that any time two people interact, that some politicking goes on. And if two people agree all the time, one of them is unnecessary. So you really have a responsibility to push your point of view. You have a responsibility to say what you believe, to stand up and be counted. And then we always say, the majority will rule. And so that's what we're talking about. We're talking about, to some degree, the rule of law. But there are a lot of ways you get the majority. One of the ways you get the majority is from voting. You know, we're going to have an election pretty soon, just like we're going to have census taken. And I was glad to see that there was information about the census at the mayor's breakfast. I was glad to see that the room was filled. And I was glad to know that we were still honoring the life of Dr. Martin Luther King. You know, I had the opportunity to meet Dr. King. I had the opportunity to march with Dr. King. I had the opportunity to know about Dr. King before I came to Chicago. And so growing up doing the movement, doing up, growing up doing the movement period, growing up doing the time when Dr. King lived, having the opportunity to go to a college where the president of our college had the audacity to invite Dr. King to be the commencement speaker the year before I got there, growing up at the same time that the effort to integrate the high school in Little Rock, Arkansas, Central High. I was a freshman in college at that time. And let me tell you, there was excitement in the air. And then living on the west side of Chicago when Dr. King came to the west side and lived 
and we had access to him. And we could go up to Edna's restaurant, and he'd be in there eating. So we'd have a good time. Call are you there? Good evening, Dr. Davis. You have represented the Seventh District. I'm going to bring my comment much more close to home. Last week, I commented about uh, recreation marijuana. Now, recently in the news, they were talking about people that are uh, preparing the uh, the marijuana <coughs> and people cutting it and packaging. They're going to be able to belong to a union, local eight eight one. And just watch what I said. I also made a comment about eight years from now. The state and local government will be selling heroin. Just watch what I said because it could be money going to be made in that. And I also said, I'm also going to say this, it could maybe certain things that have to take place. Right now, if I understand things correctly, even firefighters can partake in recreation marijuana, but not police officers. When police officers are partake in uh, recreation marijuana, just watch out. They're going to have... Uh, uh, heroin is going to be legal. We all know cigarettes is bad. Cigarettes cause lung cancers. And still, the state, county, and city make money of it. Guess what? It's coming. I hope that you're off a little bit on the legalization of heroin. And, um... I don't like it, but it's going to come. Yeah, I don't like the idea of it, and I must be honest with you, marijuana is here. We passed by one of the dispensaries this morning, and, uh, you know, the guy who was in the car with me asked, how many black people do you see out there? And I really didn't see any that I could say were black. And I said, you know, one of the reasons, though, they're not out there is because they don't have the money to make the purchases in an open environment like that. But I hope that individuals would just grow up where they have enough self-security, where they don't need external things to make them feel good. Carla, are you there? Yes, I am. I am just so happy that you are where you are because People can't be what they can't see. You are a good person. I met you even before I knew you knew my uncle. From Human Resource. We are going back to those good days where the communication is better open than ever before. It's not anymore sit down and shut up. And you continue on reaching out the way that you are doing. Because you are helping us, not just the old people, but the young people as well. Because our young people are smarter and smarter and smarter. So thank you so much. And to God be the glory for Dr. King. Because I know when they came from Alabama and different places, I was working for a black organization. Green Acres, Chicken in the Box. And <laughs> I've never seen so many black young people. Be so involved. We had good insurance agencies. So yep. all that's coming back. All right. Well, and thank you so much for attending my cousin's funeral as well. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And I must, you know, as we get ready to end, I just left a press conference that the people who live at Maypole and Pulaski where there was a shooting at a barber shop, and it was the saddest thing that you can imagine, where someone shot into this barber shop, where there were children, and so I just made a plea, to please let's remember Dr. King for his peaceful ways and his peace-producing efforts to the families of, of the individuals who were shot over in that barbershop and all the people who live right in that area. My heart goes out to you because it means that your children can't walk down the street and feel safe and secure. 
or it means that someone would shoot into a place where innocent people were and are. So let's remember Dr. King. Let's revere him. Let's renew his spirit and his efforts. Come on over to my church <laughs> Sunday afternoon <laughs> at 3.30 at the New Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. We will be honoring Dr. Martin Luther King. God bless you, keep you, and hold you, and we'll see you next week.